Hey, hope you're doing well, Tristan here. Now in this video, I'm gonna be talking you through how we can add a fixed but pretty stylish header navigation. So what we're gonna be building today is this navigation here. You'll see that when the page is at the top, it's in a fixed position. It's fixed while we scroll, but then everything condenses down slightly and you'll see an opacity as well as a slight blur in the background. As you can see the blur there. So this is what we're gonna be building today and I'll talk you through step by step how you can achieve this for your own website or even your customer websites on any project that you're working on. All right, so cool. So I have one of our blank website templates here and I've taken the header out because we're gonna be building that now. So first things first, we're building this in WordPress. We are going to be using Elemental Pro. And so what we'll need to do is head over to templates and then we're gonna hit theme builder. And this is where we are allowed to add our headers. So I've got a header here already, but if you haven't got one, just click header and then the plus icon, and that's gonna allow you to build yourself a brand new header. So let's click on this one. It's currently MD, so I'm just gonna edit it. Cool. So first of all, we need a container. So we're just gonna add a Flexbox container like so. And what we want is we want this to be full width. So we want it to span the full width of the screen. So we're gonna to go to layout and we're just gonna get a full width and make that 100%. Now, we also need to add a container inside of this one. And you might be wondering why, but I'll explain later. Because we are creating an animation where the navigation is condensing, we need to create an inner container that can handle that. So we're gonna hit container we're going to drag that in like so and we're also going to make that one for width because we want our navigation to span the entire width of the page so let's hit under content width let's hit full width and we're going to apply that to 100% too so you'll see that each one of these containers they have some spacing so they come by default, they come with padding, it's around 10 pixels, I think. So on this outer container here, what we want to do is go to advanced and we're just gonna remove the padding like so. And then all you'll see is the padding for this container. So we're just gonna leave that like so. I'm gonna rename these by double clicking on them. So we're gonna put outer header bar and I'm gonna just call this one internal header content like so. Cool. So we're inside our internal header content. You're free to put whatever you like in there, but in this example, I'm just gonna have a logo box and I'm just gonna put an icon in there, which kind of signifies that it would be a hamburger, hamburger style menu. So let's click and just quickly add a couple of elements. So site logo is gonna drop in like so. Uh, we can change the style of this, just maybe have it to 220 pixels or something. And then let's order, also add an icon, like so. Uh, we're gonna change this to bars, like that. Ooh. There we go, and brilliant. So I'm just gonna restyle that quickly. So size-wise, Let's go with 20, 24 pixels. I'm gonna right align it and I'm just gonna change the color to white. Because remember, we're gonna be building this and we want it to sit on top of this container here. So we're gonna make it white. Cool, you'll see that things, I mean, visually they're not looking ideal. This is stacked. So what we need to do is we need to click on our internal header content and we need to change the direction of the items within side the Flexbox container, like so. And there we go. It's uh, just gonna stack them side by side. And if we added multiple elements with inside here, it would just place them in a row. So visually, it's looking better, but I'm just gonna center align everything here so it's better positioned. And I'm going to space everything between because we, two, we only have two items, so I want the space in between to be between them. So one sits on the far left and the other sits on the far right, like so. Now you might want other things in here like a call to action, a phone number, a button. That's totally up to you. But for now, I'm just gonna keep it super simple. Cool, All right. All right, so next, I don't like how everything is, it's hugging essentially the top and the bottom. So I quite like typically, you know, fatter, 
taller menus, let's say. So typically I like taller menus rather than skinny ones, but again, that's your choice. I'm just gonna quickly style this up. So what I wanna do is I wanna style the internal header content. I'm gonna to go to advanced and we're just gonna apply a little bit of padding to this. So let's go, let's unchain them. I want the top to be, let's go with 20 pixels. The bottom, let's go with 20 pixels as well. And on the right, we'll just add 20 and we'll add 20. So it just moves it away from the edge. Otherwise, if it's zero, you'll see that it's completely hugging the edge of the screen because it's a full width navigation um, and we don't want that. So let's go with 20 like so. Cool. So if I'm, I'm gonna publish this, now you'll see that this is published uh, site-wide, so this header is used on every single page of the site. So once that's published, let's come back here. And cool, and you'll see that our header is at the top here. And that is because we haven't applied any negative margin to bring this content around here back up, so it sits behind the header nor have we added any fixed scroll as of yet. So let's go and do that quickly. So first of all, let's just very easily add fixed scroll. So under advanced, while we have our outer header bar selected, we're gonna go down to motion effects and we're gonna click on sticky and then we're gonna click top. Okay, and this is gonna apply a sticky effect to the top of the page. Now you can choose whether you want this to be on desktop, tablet, on mobile, I want it all, all free, so I'm not gonna remove any of these. And now the offset's really important because when when do we want this sticky to take place? Now, if you have a set of zero, it's just gonna sit there from the point in which you scroll. But if you look at this example, you'll see that it's sticky from the start and then we have some effects take place as we scroll down. So in order to achieve that, we set our offset to zero because we want the sticky to start right at the top and then our effects offset, we're just gonna place this to 100 pixels, which basically means that it's gonna stay sticky, but once we reach 100 pixels down in terms of scroll, that's when it's gonna apply the class that we need it to apply for the effects and the animation and everything that we're gonna to apply to it for it to take place. And now also, we need to pull up the content that sits underneath the header so it sits on top the best way that I achieve this is just by adding another container underneath. Okay, I'm just going to add like 100 pixels of padding to this. It doesn't really matter. I'm gonna style it so it has a dark background. And then what you wanna do is on your outer header bar, we're just gonna give this negative margin at the bottom and you can just press down arrow and it will eventually get there. Or you can fast track it by typing in a number and then working the other way. You'll see that the bar here is, is appearing and if I do do the arrows on the keyboard, you'll see that it's, it's moving. So basically what we're doing here is just pulling up the content that sits underneath this header. So the header bar is sat on top of our content because we want it to sit on top of our video here. Now you wanna go through and just double check these on tablet, make sure that that's correct and there's no spacing there too. And then mobile as well. And um, so this example, it's all fine. So I'm just gonna hit publish. Ah, my bad. Totally forgot about this blue bar. All right, so it's gonna delete that. Okay, so now that's deleted, let's republish. And let's refresh again. Cool, so you can see that that is working how we want it to work. Now, you would need to play around with the, the paddings on the edges to pull it away from this container because in this instance, we've got a slight border around the image or the video. That's a styling thing, okay? So yours might be slightly different. If you're using edge-to-edge -edge content, then this would look absolutely fine, but it's not, it's not a big deal right now. So as we scroll, you'll see that it's fixed. And if we go to inspect element, we're looking for our fixed. Actually, what I, what, there you go. I am on the right one. So we've got our okay element of sticky, and you'll see that once I scroll, it's fine. But as soon as I reach that 100 pixels offset, it's applying a active element to the sticky. Okay, so it's saying that the elemental sticky is active. Apologies, my bad. 
uh, it's not the active because it's always active it's actually the effects so that was my mistake so we're looking at the effects the effects class that appears here so this is telling us that things the effects are taking place cool so let's close that All right now let's get to the fun bit let's actually apply some of these styles so we can apply the the border the background the blur and look at moving it away from the edges uh, while animated while we scroll to get that effect where everything just you know shrinks and condenses in nice and smoothly so i do have some css for you which i will just paste in and you'll find this in the description if you want to paste that in as well but i'll talk you through it so on our outer header bar it only needs to be applied in one place we're going to come down under advanced we're going to go to custom css and we're just going to paste all of that in so let's just pull that out so you can see it a little bit more now you can see that we have some ids and we also have some classes that we need to apply to these two elements so our outer header bar we need to, if we go back to layout and we're going to go down to css id we're just going to call this header hyphen bar now if you do decide to change your header you just need to make sure that that's reflected in your css because we are calling that specific id here for each one of these css attributes now for our internal header content we need to apply a css class so we're going to click on css classes and i've called this one header hyphen internal and boom you can already see that everything is just taking place already okay so the css is there the css works but let me just quickly talk you through it so if i click on oh remember we applied it to the outer header bar and great so we are applying a border to our internal block here but it is invisible and the reason for this is because we have a border once the sticky effects take place and we don't want any jolted kind of we want to keep everything smooth we don't want anything to jolt and when you just automatically apply a one pixel border there's going to be a one pixel jump somewhere and it just looks a little bit glitchy so what we do is to avoid that is we'll apply a border to its normal state but you cannot see it because the rgb the rgba or rgb alpha uh, is set to zero next we have our internal sticky effects so once that class takes place we are then targeting the header internal so once once our class is triggered once we start scrolling and that that class triggers that i just showed you we are then applying some custom css to this container here okay and basically what we're doing is we are creating a background with a transparency so the background is black with a subtle transparency at around 40 percent we are adding a backdrop filter so this creates a blur at about seven pixels now you depending on how intense you want the blur to be you would just change that pixel to you know if you wanted it to be more subtle you could have it set to like two pixel if you wanted it to be more intense then you could set it to like 10 15 20. <laughs> Um, but seven pixel I, I like the way this looks so that's why that's currently in there now this is what's currently pushing the nav container away from the edges because we are applying margin so we're applying a margin to this so it kind of pushes itself away from the internal container that's why we have them nested to get that effect to get this once we scroll to get this effect it pushes this internal container like if I select that you'll see that this is selected it pushes it away from the external container so we've got padding uh, sorry margin at the top and the bottom and we've got margin on the left and the right we're applying a border radius so you can see that we've got curved edges but i mean ultimately if you didn't really want to have a border radius you could change that you could completely get rid of it if you wanted it to be fixed but you know we've got a blur element here we've got we've got a border so to me it visually it looks much better with a rounded edge and then here we're just applying the border which is a darker shade of the, of the black so again we're using rgba now again you might not need this it is optional but we're just essentially saying that all of the the nav items so if you had a navigation within here so if i look at this example we've got nav items in here we just want to make sure that they're all white because it might be that you are not having this overlay any sort of video it might be that you have it on white and your items are black or dark so you can see them but then when you start to scroll and that fixed animation takes place and you have this darker background on it you might then want to apply a white text style to all of your navigation items so that is just in there to allow you to do that 
And then now this is where we are applying our transition. This is where we're getting that really smooth change because if I was to remove this, and I can show you, if I just delete that, you'll see super jolty. Okay, it just goes from one state to the other. So that's why we need to have that in there. Essentially, it's just saying that we're just going to look at all transitions and we're applying a, three, a 0.3 second transition to that. So you can see it's nice and smooth there. And that needs to be applied to a couple of things. So it needs to be applied to the internal header bar. It needs to be applied to the navigation items. It needs to be applied to the logo. It needs to be applied to uh, anything else that's internal. Uh, if you've got items in there that you, you know, if you notice that things are jolting and not animating smoothly, find its CSS its source and then just add it to here just by adding a comma and add the add the source in there um, but any any struggles there just let me know in the comments and then we've got some styling for the mobile so essentially what we're doing on mobile is just we're making this a lot darker so if I come here you'll see this it's, it's much darker when we scroll and so play around with that um, I just find that on a mobile device um, just having this header because everything's a lot more smaller and condensed having it darker just makes it a lot more easier on the eyes, like so. Cool, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to publish that. And I'm gonna come back here and refresh. And scroll down. And you'll see that the the animation and everything is working almost as it should do. However, you can see that the the bar in itself is, is being pushed off to the right. Uh, which is not what we want but the blur effect is there the background is there and the animation is there like so so let's let's have a look at why this is doing that so i'm just going to come back cool uh so i actually had to take a pause because i couldn't figure this out but um i got there and i'm not sure how this happened but by clicking on internal header content so our internal section here we have the size attribute under the advanced settings and this is currently set to none uh, maybe I clicked this accidentally, maybe it was there by default, actually I don't know. But if you're having the same problem, just take a look at this. And I'm going to just unselect that so nothing is selected. And if I scroll down now, you'll see that it is moving down to the center. It's, it's condensed in the way that it should do. If I select that again, you'll see that it pushes off to the left, or off to the right, sorry. So I'm going to undo that. Now you've got a couple of options as to what you can do here. You know, if you want to change the amount that it's moving away from the page, then you would just change your CSS like so. So I'm going to come down to our custom CSS again, and you, know, you could change that to 20, for example. So the margin is applied to the top and the bottom here, and the left and the right here. So you can see that it's moving not so far off of the left and right now which uh, looks a little bit neater, but it's totally up to you. If you want more of an intense kind of push away, then you could change that to 30. Totally up to you. You have, you have the freedom and you have the control to, to make this however you wish. So I am going to take the CSS. I will put it in the video uh, description so you can copy and paste it. You can edit it like so. Uh, but let me just update that. I'm going to come back and refresh. And then we've got our header at the top, and then we, it's fixed. As you can see, we scroll down, the animation kicks in like so, which looks really nice, really nice. So hopefully that makes sense, guys. Hopefully you're able to implement this into your own websites. If you do have any questions, and you know, let me down, let me know down in the comments. And yeah, there's more videos on the channel, including little tips and tricks and videos about how to improve your web design business. So make sure that you go and check those out. There's a video appearing on screen now, which you will also find useful. And that's it for me. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.